I just need someone to test it out. Pop! Pop! Mike! How's it going? Delightfully, thanks. I was just taking the most pleasant stroll across that footbridge. Well, that's just what I needed you for. Why don't you take a stroll across my bridge? Well, don't mind if I do. Pop? Is this thing safe? I don't know. That's why I wanted you to test it. Oh, sure. Pop, the human guinea pig, will now risk life and limb to test your bridge made out of blocks, and you haven't even tested it? Gosh, sorry, Pop. I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah, Mike. Mike, it's okay. I was just pulling your leg. Yeah. Your bridge looks pretty secure to me. Hey, Pop, how do they build real bridges? Oh, you want to open up that can of worms, huh? Yeah. Bridges come in all different sizes and shapes, but they all have the same purpose. To get people, cars, trains, or other things from one side of something to the other. Now it can be a canyon, a road, or a train track, but most of the time it's water. You know, bridges really make our lives a lot easier. Just imagine how hard it would be to get across some of these places without a bridge. Plus, bridges can be really cool to look at. Building a bridge, especially some of these big ones, is a huge job which takes many years lots of planning, and lots of people and machines. Over the years, engineers had to figure out how to make bridges that could span across long distances and have the strength to hold a lot of weight. And they came up with three basic styles. Beam bridges, arch bridges, and suspension bridges. So, what kind of bridge do you think you've built here? Well, it doesn't have an arch, and it's not hanging from anything, so I guess it's a beam bridge. Right. This is a beam bridge. Since it doesn't have to go very far, you can use one block to reach across the tracks, and it'll support all the weight that's required of it. Did you know that most bridges you see on highways today are beam bridges? Hey. As a matter of fact, I know of one they're building right now. Want to go? Sure. Great. Come on. Hey, kids, check this out. We are at a real live construction site where workmen are building a beam bridge called a fixed span bridge. The bridge is being built so the road can cross over the water below. Now, the first thing the workmen had to do was build the piers for the beams to span across. Now they are building one of the sections of bridge deck. Let's take a look. Yep, you're absolutely right, Mike. Little by little, they build a road across from one pier to the next. Ugh, look at all that mushy concrete. It looks like mud. Good thing they've got their boots on. They better get out of there before it dries. Yep. 
See, they bring truckload after truckload of concrete out onto the bridge. And then they smooth it out to make the surface of the road. Hey, they pump it through this long hose. Now that's what I call a long, long hose, eh, Mike? Still not over. It's like a snake. Well, that's pretty gross, Pop. Nah, I think those guys have fun in the wet concrete. See him splashing around? What's he digging, Pop? Oh, he's digging a hole so they can build a support pier on the abutment. What's an abutment? An abutment is the land on either side of a bridge. Now are they digging a hole under the water for another support pier? Exactly, Mike. First they dig down to the bedrock at the bottom of the bay. And then they fill the hole with more concrete to make a base for the pier. Wow, they must go through a lot of concrete. Tons. Concrete, Mike, huh? They bring the trucks in. They spin that stuff just like a drying cycle. Hey, Pop, this is Theron. He's one of the bridge engineers. He taught me a lot of stuff. So how long is this bridge? The bridge is approximately 2,200 feet long from the abutment in the city of Salem to the abutment over in the city of Beverly. How long would it take to build a bridge like this? The total duration on this project is approximately two and a half years. Then Theron told me how they lift these big things up with a crane and fill them with concrete to make the tops of the piers. It takes a long time, so we had to speed up the videotape. is a form, or a mold, which is filled with concrete to make the hammerhead pier cap, which holds up the steel beams. Hey, Mike. <whistles> Come here. Look at this. Climb on up here. Now bounce. <clears throat> wow, it's like a trampoline. Not very stable, is it? Now, tip it on its side. It's not a trampoline anymore. Now it's solid as a rock. That's because a beam tipped on its side is much stronger. Take a look. When you look at the end of a steel beam, it looks like the letter I, which is why they are called I-beams. See, here they are, holding up the bridge. This is Bob, but everyone calls him Toast. He's gonna show us how this crane works. See, that crane won't I couldn't work. believe Toast was gonna let me drive the crane all by myself. Your right swing. First, he showed me how the controls work. This is the left. Let's bring it down. That hook you got there. That's then down. he let me give it a try. That one's up. Stop. I keep going. Should I keep going? They use this crane to move big bundles of rebar into position. They are way too heavy for the workers to move by themselves, so they pick them up and then move them around with this crane. Oh, okay. We want you to go down now. Down. 
was great. So, I understand what beam bridges are all about. What about arch bridges? I'm glad you asked. Take a look. Years ago, bridge builders discovered the strength of the arch, and today's bridge builders still use the same principles. When a bridge needs to span a distance greater than what a beam could support, something else needs to give it its strength and stability. That's where an arch comes into play. Natural arches like this one probably gave early bridge builders the idea of using arches in their bridges. First they used stone, and then later they used steel to construct these graceful arch shapes which could support a lot of weight. Hey, look at me! I'm flying over an arch bridge! I'm standing in front of the Sagamore Bridge in Massachusetts. This bridge was built in the 1930s, and it's a great example of an arch bridge. That arch is over 200 feet high, and it supports the weight of the bridge and all the cars and trucks that are driving over it. Now I'm standing in front of the Bourne Bridge. It was built about the same time as the Sagamore, and as you can see, they're very similar. These two bridges are the only way people can drive to Cape Cod and that's why there are traffic jams on summer weekends. Wait a second. Hey, Pop, where are you? What's that other bridge way down there? You mean this one? <laughs> yeah. That's a railroad bridge. When a train is coming, like right now, they lower the bridge so the train can cross. But after the train has passed, they raise the bridge so the boats can go underneath. <laughs> You know, I know another bridge which lets boats go under it. You do? I sure do. My family used to vacation down here on Cape Cod. Can you zoom us to Woods Hole? Well, sure. Watch out, Pop. Hey, hey, Don't hey. fall in. Don't you. See, Pop, every half hour they raise this little bridge to let the boats go out of the harbor. You're absolutely right, Mike. That's called a drawbridge. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, whoops. Sorry, Pop. This is Karen. She's going to show us how this drawbridge works. Hi, Karen. Hi, Mike. We've got some boats that are ready to come out, so we've got to get the bridge open for them. 
First thing we have to do, these are our controls, is we have to give the traffic the red light. So why don't you go ahead and push that red button. This one? That one right there. Now follow me. We have to go out and swing these gates. Back inside. Okay, we always check to make sure there's nobody that runs across the bridge, because that happens a lot. And push the up button. Here we go. He's coming by at 15.08. That's Tim. Hi, Tim. And he's going out. Okay, I don't believe there's anybody else coming. So we can give the red light here. And I guess we can put the bridge down now. Okay, so we've seen beam bridges, arch bridges, even draw bridges. What's left? The zip bang ding granddaddy of them all, suspension bridges. And the next time you try and knock me in the water, I'll give you such a... Ow. Ow. Some of the most famous bridges in the world are suspension bridges. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge, the George Washington Bridge, And one of my favorites, the Brooklyn Bridge, all in New York City. Of course, there is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Suspension bridges must be carefully designed. Mike, look what happens when they aren't. Yikes! Did anyone get hurt? Whew, luckily, no. But the builder of this bridge learned a big lesson about what wind can do to a suspension bridge. Hey, let's watch as they build the Pisan Odo Bridge in Japan. Just like at the beam bridge you visited, Mike, the first things they need to get built for a suspension bridge are the pier towers. They even use underwater explosives to help dig the footings for the huge pier towers. Little by little, the towers went up. They lifted some of the big pieces into position with a huge crane. That's the crane on top of that tower. Wow, it's almost as tall as the tower itself. It sure is. But they had some pretty big pieces to lift into place. What's that? That's the wire they use for the cable. It's red hot because it's coming right out of the steel mill. They string thousands and thousands of these strands of wire together to make the huge cables which will support the bridge.
Look at all the cables. It looks like a huge spider's web. She would not believe how much wire and cable it takes. Now they have the main cable strung, and all they have to do is build the roadway which will hang from the cable. Wow, that's a cool looking bridge. Yeah, they don't come a whole lot cooler than that one. Those cables must be pretty strong. They sure are. Hey, as a matter of fact, getting those cables suspended from tower to tower is the most difficult part about building the suspension bridge. Here's how they did it when they were building the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> When they built the Golden Gate Bridge, they used this shuttle wheel to pull each strand of cable across, one at a time, from one tower to the other. Eventually, they had a giant cable that measured almost six feet in diameter. Then, they wrapped a huge cable with one more strand to hold it all together. Finally, they hung from the support cables and painted the whole thing gold. Uh, well, orange, really. And here it is today, the Golden Gate Bridge. So, Mike, how do you think your bridge stacks up? <clears throat> well, from my educated viewpoint, I would have to say that my rudimentary beam-style bridge, while being quite simple in its design, has sound engineering and is rather functional. But most of all, I think it's pretty safe. Well, Professor, I'd say I'd have to agree. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. Say, Mike, I think this is one of the most pleasant strolling bridges I've ever encountered. Hey, 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 watch it. Just kidding. Boy. Whew. Hey. Go ahead, one more time. Bring it around. Here we go. Hep. Ho! Hey! What do you think, Mike, huh? Not bad. I'm a dancing man. Oh!